Okay, let's find out a little bit more. Uh, chapter 15, The Slipper's Secret. Hmm, what is it that they're going to help her do? Pearl had imagined all sorts of powers for her leprechaun shoes, but never this. Silent slippers. She was so surprised she forgot all about having caught the second dragonfly. As her arms dropped to her sides, the little creature flew away. You mean, they don't make any noise when I walk? Dr. Wu nodded. If you can imagine to make the rest of you quiet, then you could go anywhere in absolute and complete silence. The rest of me, Pearl clamped a hand over her mouth. Oh yeah, the talking thing. Do you realize what this means? Ben said. You can sneak into places without getting caught. You're so lucky. This is a fortunate turn of events, Dr. Wu said. Since you are the only one who can coax the unicorn foal out of hiding, I was going to ask you to enter the dark forest. Alone. Of course, you could have refused. She crouched next to Pearl and touched one of the pink slippers. But there's no need to worry. These will keep you safe from predators. What they cannot hear, they cannot catch. But they can still see me, Pearl said. Plants do not have eyes. Plants? Ben spit the words out in surprise. Uh, the predators are plants? Well, that's good news. I was worried we were gonna run into another Kelpie. Plants aren't any big deal, right? I mean, it's not like they can chase after you or anything. Dr. Wu stood and then brushed dried leaves from her legs. Plants are more dangerous because they have no brains and thus no intelligence. You cannot rationalize with them. You cannot bribe them or make a deal with them. They react by instinct alone. And when these particular plants hear someone coming, they attack. But they won't attack me, Pearl said, because they won't be able to hear me. Exactly. Cobblestone, the leprechaun, chose wisely when you gave you these slippers. Mine are quite different. You have leprechaun shoes? Yes. They allow me to walk on water which does come in handy when I am not wearing a bathing suit. Dr. Wu stepped aside. Show us your slippers in action. Pearl took some steps and then jumped up and down. She crushed sticks and leaves under her foot, but not a sound emerged. Oh, can I borrow those for Halloween? Ben asked. I could sneak up on some people and totally scare them. Sure, said Pearl. Something vibrated. Dr. Wu pulled out her creature calculator and read its screen. I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news is that I am now able to pick up the foal's vital signs, which means she is not far from here. The bad news is that her heart rate is elevated, an indication that she is under high levels of stress. Do you think the plants are trying to hurt her? Ben asked, doubtful. Unicorns are also able to walk in silence, so the plants won't even know she's there, but something is in there and scaring her. Or someone, Pearl grumbled. They continued the journey with renewed urgency. The foliage moved aside just like before, but after a few moments, the path ended at a wall of black. We have reached the dark wall, Dr. Wu said. It surrounds the dark forest. Pearl tried to touch the wall, but it wasn't solid. Her hand disappeared from view and she pulled it back into the light and tried it again and it disappeared. You want me to go in there? Yes, said Dr. Wu. If Ben and I were to accompany you, the foal would not show herself. She will trust you and only you.
Should I take the medical bag too? No. You will need both of your hands to be free. Unicorns do not like the dark and you might need to carry her out. Well, that's no problem, Pearl said. I carry boxes at the dollar store all the time. She looked into the darkness. But how will I find my way back to you? Now, that is an example of a question of quality, Dr. Wu said, but she offered no answer, which Pearl found very frustrating. You could use something to mark your path, Ben suggested. He took a yellow hat from his pocket. Thanks to Violet's nibbling, it had already begun to unwind. You could tie pieces of yarn to the trees as you go. That is an excellent idea, Dr. Wu said. Ben's plan reminded Pearl of the story her mother had read to her about a couple of kids who left a trail of breadcrumbs when they walked into the woods. But the crumbs got eaten by birds so the kids couldn't find their way back. Wait, said Pearl. Are there birds in the dark forest? Because some birds will steal yarn for their nests. I know this because I have a nest collection. Dr. Wu shook her head. There are no birds in the dark forest. Okay. Pearl took the hat and tucked it into her lab coat pocket. What plants am I really watching out for? Well, they are called flesh eaters. You can't miss them because they grow in clumps with enormous white flowers. They create a scent that each of us can't resist, but don't let it distract you. It's a trick. Flesh eaters? That sounded pretty bad. Pearl fidgeted. She ran through the tasks at hand. Go into the darkness, mark the trail with bits of yarn, find the foal, carry it back to Dr. Wu, all while staying clear of the flesh eating plants. This was nothing like working at the dollar store where the most dangerous items were scissors. But this was just another ordinary day in the imaginary world. I have one last question, Pearl said. How am I supposed to see where I am going? Dr. Wu pointed overhead. Pearl reached up and grabbed a firefly and then she grabbed two more. As she held them in her palm, light streamed between the cracks of her fingers, kind of like a flashlight. That should do it. Good luck. Dr. Wu patted Pearl's back and then she added, try not to work, walk in circles, for the dark forest can be very disorienting. Yeah, don't walk in circles, Ben said. The shortest distance to something is a straight line. We learned that in math camp. No one said a word about Maximus Steel. Maybe Dr. Wu was right, Pearl thought. We shouldn't just jump to conclusions. He could be a million miles away in some other land, bothering some other horned creature. There was no reason to assume that he would have trapped the unicorn foal. So why worry if there really isn't anything to worry about? The truth would reveal itself soon. So after taking a deep breath, Pearl stepped into the darkness. <laughs>